So when I'm done shooting stock footage, the first place that all my footage goes is onto my current working hard drive. I've got three folders set up there. The first is called raw, and that's just where all the files go directly from the SD card before I bring them into Premiere. Then I've got an exported local folder that once they come out of Premiere, that's the first place that they go before I rename and upload all the clips. And once they've been uploaded, they go into the uploaded folder until I have them backed up. we will bring all of my clips into Adobe Premiere. I've got them in the assembly view just because right now what I need to see is the clips and the viewer. In the viewer here, I will start to set in and out points for my clips. When I like a clip, I'm setting my in and out and then I'll just right click and I'll say new sequence from clip and I'll just keep scrubbing through my clips. There are clips that I'm not gonna use. As I'm scrubbing through, I'm kind of deciding which clips I like, which I don't. When I find a clip that I like, I'll set the in point where I want the clip to start. I'll set the out point where I want the clip to end. Then I right click and I say new sequence from clip. And so once you've gone through your batch, you've selected your favorite clips, you've got a bunch of sequences, one clip per sequence. You've got them all opened here. That's when I would click over into the editing workspace. And if I need to, I will do my color correction in Lumetri Color. You can see just a little bit of a basic curves, adjustment, contrast, saturation. With stock footage, you're not going crazy. If you need to apply warp stabilizer, you can apply warp stabilizer. And typically what I'll do is if it's a batch of clips that I shot at the same time, this Lumetri color effect, I will just copy and then I will paste it onto the other clips in the same batch. I might have to make small tweaks. Once you've got your clips colored, stabilized as you like them, what you can do here, just select all of your clips, right click. We're going to say export media. Now, if I'm exporting to black box, they accept H.264 files at a minimum bit rate of 150 megabits per second. My C200 shoots at 150 megabits per second, and I'm matching my width and height based on source, which for these C200 clips is 3840 by 2160 UHD 4K. And you're also matching the frame rate to the source of the clips. So that, that means you're not gonna export mistakenly in the wrong for frame rate. Make sure that you pay attention to the guidelines for whatever stock footage site you're uploading to. You'll hit Q and that will open up Adobe Media Encoder, which is the Adobe way of exporting a whole bunch of different clips at the same time and it will chew through that and then go ahead and click over into Adobe Media Encoder you'll see all your clips here and what I do is I set my destination again to that exported local folder choose and then hit play and Media Encoder will start chewing through those clips once Media Encoder finishes going through the clips, this is the stage where I rename them. I just have a simple numeric system so that each clip gets a unique name. And from there, you'll upload using FileZilla, whatever your preferred FTP client is. And once those clips end up on the stock footage site, I move them over into the uploaded folder and then I send them out to my backup drive. So that's just a quick look at how I get through a batch of stock footage clips efficiently. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next one. All right, Drew, do your magic.